senior doctors, my doctor friends. I'm happy to share my views on a deep dive into Vildagliptin, the clinical gem with a particular focus on evidences. I thank uh, um, Chairperson for the nice introduction. I thank the organizing committee members for their kind invitations. My disclosures, of course, I have no conflict of interest in relation to my presentation. So deep dive into Vildagliptin, the clinical gem. I'm sure type 2 diabetes is a multicausal heterogeneous progressive cardiac renal metabolic condition. The progressive nature is one of the major challenges. So getting the patients to go become challenging as the disease progresses. Multiple intervention will need to be used while managing diabetes as the duration advances. So the ICMR in-depth studies showed that nearly 70% of the patients had not achieved the target goal of A1C. Early intensive therapeutic control has proven benefits. This was highlighted nicely by an article published in Diabetes Care 2019. Diabetes and aging clearly confirms strict glycemic control, reduces the risk of micro as well as macrovascular complications, as well as the morbidity in the long run. So the unmet needs of improving and achieving the A1C goal that is strongly associated with uh, requirement to for diverse therapeutic options and incontinent therapy offers an alternative options to currently available anti-diabetic agents with modest efficacy and favorable rate change profile. So as type 2 diabetes progresses, there is a progressive decline in beta cell function. Of course, the causes are many, may be related to glucotoxicity, lipotoxicity, inflammation, oxidative stress, and that leads to progressive deterioration in glycemic control. Current therapies are associated with the weight gain and or increase the risk of hypoglycemia. So what is the solution? So this particular slide clearly shows uh, we have galaxy of drugs. It has been compared with reference to various parameters like A1C, hypoglycemic risk, body weight, and so on. And that DPP-4 inhibitor therapy has been associated with effective A1C reduction, low rate of A1, uh, risk of hypoglycemia, and body weight neutrality. With reference to relevance of DPP-4 in Indians, this particular study clearly shows significant differences in total GLP as well as intact GLP. And that young, healthy Asian, South Asian showed higher GLP-1 may be related to a compensatory increased secretion or due to GLP-1 resistant state. So patients with the type 2 diabetes or patients with a normal glucose tolerance as they progress to IGT to type 2 diabetes, there is a progressive decline in EGLP level as well as GLP-1 responsiveness. And this may be associated with reduced insulin secretory capacity and there is an increased uh, response to incretin-based therapies. So increased DPP for enzyme activity in non-obese Indian patients. Of course, study conducted by Anup Mishra. So the circulating plasma DPP-4 levels positively correlate with the waist hip ratio, total intra-abdominal adipose tissue, fostering serum insulin level, LDL cholesterol, as well as triceps skin fold. So what happened? There is increased expression of DPP-4 in patients with obesity, type 2 diabetes, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and their DPP levels are significantly upregulated by serum insulin levels and tumor necrosis factor alpha. So subclinical association may be associated with increased plasma DPP-4 inhibitor. So gliptins, an integral part of 2022 RSS reveal hierarchy of therapies depicted in clockwise direction. And apart from that, any of the drugs can be used in the green for other zones. Drugs must be used in given order. So pinegliptin, first study demonstrating that DPP-4 inhibitor, it will take gliptin, increases GLP and reduces glucagon in a glucose-dependent manner. And that continuous DPP-4 inhibition increases active GLP levels while improving glucose tolerance. So this particular study highlighted highlights the pharmacodynamic properties of bildagliptin. So we get the citagliptin. It binds with the DPP-4 enzyme, forming an inhibitor DPP-4 complex. On the other hand, bildagliptin is not a competitive inhibitor. On the other hand, it behaves like a substrate. It binds with the DPP-4 enzyme, and it, it, while binding, it, of, it ensures tight binding and slow dissociation, ensuring longer duration of action and a greater in vivo potency. So the benefits of covalent binding, elevated levels of intact incretin hormones, they're maintained for a longer period of time, associated with the less glycemic variability. Patients can able to maintain more time in range with a potent blood glucose lowering effects. This particular three important trials, Patient with a type 2 diabetes, invariably controlled on metformin as an add-on therapy, AG trial, lowered A1C to less than, less than 7%, without weight gain or hyperglycemia. 
initial trial that is an early combination therapy associated with significant reduction in a1c perifent trial compared to metformin as monotherapy early combination therapy improves long term glycemic variability compared with mono metformin monotherapy next is this particular slide clearly shows the least chances of hypo that is a hormonal how a hormonal counter regulated response to hypo so the effect could be mediated in part via the autonomic nervous system activation because it was accompanied by enhanced stimulation of pancreatic polypeptide secretion especially as an index of the vagus input to the pancreas so pilocalyptin enhances the ability of the alpha cell as well as the beta cell sensitivity and respond appropriately to changes in plasma glucose concentration pilocalyptin suppress inadequate inappropriate glucagon secretion during meal and enhances the alpha cell responses to both the suppressive effects of hyper as well as the stimulatory effect of the hypoglycemia pilocalyptin demonstrate low risk of hyper so pilocalyptin associated with significantly fewer hypo episodes compared with sulfonylurea and patient achieved good glycemic control and weight control observed with pilocalyptin therapy so it improves glycemic control by increasing alpha and beta cell response to the glucose the enhancement of insulin secretion and inhibition of gluco glucagon secretion or glucose dependent so when there is a rise in the plasma glucose level stimulates the beta cells to secrete insulin when the circulating levels of plasma glucose level goes down it stimulates alpha cells to release glucagon islet enhancer vildagliptin with a better tir this particular study suggests that tir is not only robust related to the secretory function of pancreatic beta cells but also glucagon release of alpha cells and that vildagliptin produces dose dependent reduction in dpp4 leading to improved beta cell sensitivity to glucose and improved alpha cell sensitivity to glucose and reduction in inappropriate glucagon secretion so several that is systematic review and meta analysis conducted by different authors have been shown in this particular slide if you look into the maze and the individual components with reference to the cardiovascular death or stroke or myocardial infarction see the 95% confidence upper bound of the confidence interval and the hazard ratio so not associated with the increased risk for adjudicated maze relative to other comparator and do not find an increased risk of heart failure in vildagliptin treated patients very important thing is there is no significant effect on the pr interval or the qrs duration right next is tcos trial evaluating cardiovascular outcome with reference to citagliptin so citagliptin did not increase the risk for maze as well as increase the risk for hospitalization for heart failure saxa did not increase the risk for maze at the same time there is increase the risk for hospitalization for heart, heart failure Allogliptin did not increase the rates of major adverse cardiovascular events. So also, vildagliptin not associated with the increased risk of maze. So based on all the published CV outcomes, except Saxa, all other gliptins can be considered to be CV safe. So this particular slide again highlighting different DPP4 inhibitors. Vildagliptin only meta analysis and systematic review. On the other hand, citagliptin and linagliptin have. what is the safety outcome trial and you can see the comparator arm with reference to cv death non fatal mi and non fatal stroke and 3p maze all gliptins or cv neutral next is renal safety nearly 19 studies involving several thousands of patients studied so what is the result so vildagliptin approved at all stages of renal insufficiency only dosage modification is needed if it is less than six, less than 50 we need to give half the dose once daily in contrast to the egfr greater than 60 wherein we prescribe twice daily or once daily and this is a particular nomogram you can see the a1c fasting plasma glucose level and a1c reduction this particular nomogram estimates the absolute a1c reduction from baseline using the type of dpp4 inhibitor baseline values of a1c and fasting glucose level of course this is not intended to give a comparison of dpp different dpp4 inhibitor this can help clinicians to predict the a1c response to each dpp4 versus placebo again with reference to fasting plasma glucose and a1c reduction with vildagliptin is highest across all bases of a1c and fasting plasma glucose level so patient with a1c less than 8.5 or more than 8.5 there is a definite role for incretin based therapies so a baseline a1c level and fasting glucose like level explain most of the variance in a1c change again this particular study 
efficacy and safety of builder, sitter and leaner. So change in A1C in the builder glyptin group and the proportion of patients achieving the target A1C levels. Next is efficacy and safety of builder, sitter and leaner. This particular, uh, uh, I mean comparative study clearly showed builder was more effective in achieving glycemic control and decreasing insulin requirement when compared to sitter and leaner when this particular drugs were prescribed in patient with the type 2 diabetes on insulin and other OED. Again, effects of builder and sitter in lowering fasting plasma glucose level. So builder produce a significantly greater reduction in APG versus baseline compared with the citagliptin, which may translate into clinical relevance. Again, efficacy and safety of sitta, builder, and metformin in newly diagnosed type 2 diabetic patient. Considering two hour post prandial plasma glucose, builder showed the highest degrees of greater than 40%. That is more, that is patient with 140 milligram than sitta, that is 36.4. So time in range, analysis of 24 hours. Patient on builder glyptin spend additional time with the reference to the target range when compared to citagliptin. Next is patient, this particular continuous glucose monitoring clearly shows large major decrements in the bildagliptin group compared with the citagliptin. There is a marked increase in the GLP-1 occurred during interprandial period on bildagliptin BID treated towards citagliptin 100 milligram once daily. These are all trials showing the comparative efficacy when bildagliptin has been compared with other currently available DPP-4 inhibitors. So the multifactorial effects of bildagliptin added to ongoing metformin therapy in patients with the type 2 diabetes. There is a significant decrease in A1C, FPG, PPG levels, greatest improvement in measures of beta cell function, significant improvement on lipid parameters, and significant reduction of inflammatory markers, and next is significant increase in the hemostatic parameters, such as fibrinogel 1 and PI-1 activity, and associated with modest weight loss, and significant reduction of systolic BP. Next is we have the formulation, 50 milligram regular as well as once daily formulation. Is there any difference with reference to pharmacokinetic and dynamic profile? So sustained release once daily has been compared with 50 milligram twice daily in this particular study. This particular study clearly shown that sustained release 100 milligram is bioequivalent to 50 milligram twice daily in terms of rate and extent of absorption under positive conditions. Again, the ability of bildagliptin, 100 milligram sustained release provide 80% DPP-4 inhibition coverage over 24 hours may help to achieve a clinically meaningful glucose lowering effect and reduce the pill burden in patients with the diabetes. Again, 100 milligram therapeutic equivalence in terms of efficacy parameter, no significant difference. Weight neutrality affirms the weight um, neutrality of bildagliptin 100 milligram sustained release and safety, no change in liver enzymes, safe in parameters of changes with reference to liver enzymes. So opportunities for optimal control. We have built a glyptin 50 milligram once daily, 50 milligram twice daily, and 100 milligram sustained release one, uh, once daily in combination with metformin, dapagliflozin, as well as pyoglitazone. In short, assurance of earlier and better glycemic control that may be more durable, low risk of hypo, no body weight gain, thereby improving patient adherence to treatment, offering more opportunities to address individual patient needs. Thank you very much for your kind listening.